Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're having a look at how the VCAT extracted properties are structured and how we can use the Power BI transformation capabilities to manipulate this data into a structure that can be more suited to the type of report that you are trying to build. To this end, let's start by having a look at the VCAT properties dataset. So we've discussed in previous videos uh, we're going to go over to the VCAT table and the VCAT properties query. So I was saying we've discussed in previous videos how VCAT doesn't know beforehand which data will be included in your model. Therefore, the only way it can actually store the properties that are extracted from your model is in this destructured uh, form. So what this basically means is uh, instead of having a column for each property, you're going to have a row for each property, uh, which is very simple to then play around with inside of Power BI. So if you want to have a look at an example, if I come over here and I filter out a single object, for example, 2227, and I apply, I can see here are the properties for that object. I can see they're grouped into sections. And then for each row, I have a property name and its property value. And then there's some extra information about the units of measurement and the specific data type for that value. Okay, now, this is a great way to structure the data in the report uh, for the actual data uh, retrieval. And also, if we have a look in our asset detail page, this is how we actually use the, the properties inside the property table here. So if I select an item, for example, let's go ahead and hide everything. Uh, maybe get some more interesting objects. Okay, there we go. Here we see I have a list of the properties. So it's fine. It depends on how you want to represent this information. Uh, very often, however, what you'll want is instead of having many rows for your property, uh, is identify a couple of properties and then manage them as different columns um, related to your assets. Really simple to do in Power BI. So instead of all this talking, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at how we would actually do that. Um, so to do it, let's start by having a look at the transform data section of Power BI. Um, and let's start by figuring out which properties we're going to be looking at. So in, in this specific example, uh, I've identified a couple of properties and a couple type of assets that could be interesting. Uh, so for starters, we're going to look at assembly codes, uh, manufacturer, and model by way of properties. So let's go ahead and start with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the VCAT properties query, and I'm going to create a reference over here. I'm going to drag it down to the other queries just so I have a, a little order. And I'm going to go ahead and rename it right away. And this I'm going to rename to my props. Uh, and we're actually going to show you a couple ways we can do this. So first off, we're going to start from the properties query, uh, and then we're going to start filtering it based on the properties that, as I said, we want to check out. So let's go ahead and start by filtering the section. Now, I know that the properties that I'm interested in are part of the identity data section. So just to start getting everything organized, I'm going to filter based on that section. Uh, and then here, I can actually filter the properties I'm interested in. So as I said, assembly code, and then I have the manufacturer and the model. Let's go ahead and apply. You can see here I have only these three properties for uh, my various objects. And you'll notice many of these don't actually have values. It's perfectly fine. It depends on the data that was inputted inside of the original model. Uh, as a report creator, I am then free to choose if I want to manage the data. Uh, I'm sorry, if I want to manage the cases in which the data is missing, if I want to maybe highlight it and get back to the people who are managing the report uh, and send, hey, maybe we need to have a look at the model and stuff like that. Uh, for now, we're simply going to take this data and see how we can uh, add this to the asset query. So as I said, instead of having multiple rows, I'd like to have multiple columns for these properties. To do that, it's very simple. Uh, let's start by removing some of the columns we don't need. So we don't need data type, we don't need data type context. So I'm gonna select these columns by control clicking, then right click and remove the columns. 
Okay, now I'm going to select the name column and we're going to go to the transform uh, tab up here and then select pivot column. This will allow me to then pivot the data. So what I want to do is make sure that I select the correct value column for my values, which of course is the value column. And then in the advanced options, uh, I want to tell it that I don't want to do any aggregations. So don't aggregate. And then I go, to go ahead and confirm. And there we go. I have exactly the structure that I wanted. So I have a single row for each object ID and multiple columns for each one of the properties that I had filtered out. Uh, and you'll see some of these don't have values, some do, and we'll notice in a moment which, which cases do and which don't. Uh, but for now, I have the table that I'm interested in, uh, but I said I wanted those in the assets table. So let's go ahead and uh, let's check out the VCAT asset table. And now I want to add those new columns to my VCAT asset table. To do it, uh, I'm simply going to select the VCAT asset query, uh, switch back to the home tab, merge queries. And now I'm going to select my props and merge based on the object ID column. Confirm. There we go. And now I have a table column, which I can expand. Uh, I don't need the object ID and I don't need a prefix. Let's go ahead and apply. There we go. And now I have new columns for my properties, just like I have category, family, and symbol. Uh, I also have assembly code, manufacturer, and model. Uh, okay, so for now, I'm already good to go. Let's switch back to the report and have a look at uh, what this actually means in my report. So let's go ahead and apply. Uh, Power BI is going to refresh the um, queries that are involved in the transformations I just made. Uh, and then we can go back to the actual dashboarding uh, section. Okay, uh, before we have a look at the dashboard layout, let's quickly go to the model view uh, because Power BI will try to create a relationship. There we go. Um, we're, we're not interested in this relationship. There's no need for a relationship with my props because we actually merged the data back into VCAT assets. So it's kind of redundant. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this relationship right now. There we go. Uh, and I'll show you in a moment instead an example that uses the relationship. Uh, now let's go back to the report view. And I can remove this prop property list here and maybe reset the selection. And here I can, let me just duplicate this table just so I have a bit of styling, uh, resize it a bit. Okay, and here I can remove the various values and we're going to be adding instead the new columns that I've uh, generated. So from my VCAT asset column, I'm gonna be adding the asset code, the manufacturer and the model. Uh, there we go, model. Okay, Okay. so you see here I have uh, several different values. Uh, now, instead of focusing on all possible objects, let's focus in on a few objects. So let's imagine that I'm actually creating a specific report and I only want to focus on a subset of, of uh, devices, appliances, or elements of my model. And so in this specific case, I'm only going to be focusing on objects of category uh, plumbing fixtures and um, specialty equipment. There we go. Okay, so now I've reduced the data set quite a bit. Uh, and you can see here my possible values also have reduced. Now when I select uh, a row here, I can see the actual values for that object. Uh, and you can see they don't vary much. Uh, they basically change when I switch between objects, but you'll see there are some of these that don't actually have values. And so I might be interested in figuring out a way to filter these. Uh, it is now very simple to filter out those objects. 
uh, I have these columns. So just like I filtered based on a category, which is something that we're very used to doing in VCAD, uh, I can do it also with my new properties that I've uh, sort of highlighted and identified. So if I take my family slicer and I clear it out, uh, I can then very easily uh, drop in the manufacturer, for example. And now what I can do is I can filter based on the manufacturer. So I can either say, okay, I only want to see the general partitions, or I can go ahead and say, show me everything except for whatever doesn't have a manufacturer. There we go. And so now I've filtered out the data uh, based on uh, this new property that I have. And it only took me a couple of minutes to set up. Okay, so this is, I said, one of the ways to do it. Uh, so actually merging the data back into the assets. Uh, most cases, this will be one of the, the preferred ways. Uh, the other option would be to instead create a different data set. So create a different, a distinct query uh, that I have then a relationship with my original assets table. Uh, there are several reasons you would want this depending on the sort of relationships you then have with external data sets. We're not going to get into those right now, uh, but I am going to show you how you would set that up. And we're actually going to consider a different way of creating that data set altogether. So let's go back to transform data. And in the previous example, I started from the properties because I knew I wanted to focus on a couple properties. Now let's imagine that not only do I know which properties I want to focus on, but I already know which objects I'm actually interested in. So in my report, in the end, I knew that I only wanted plumbing fixtures and special equipment. So there's no real reason to do all the transformations we did for all of the objects. I can start by narrowing the scope to only those objects, saving on, um, on time when, when I'm then doing the transformations uh, when I refresh the data set. So let's start by doing that. So let me create a duplicate of my assets uh, query. So I'm going to right click and duplicate. I'm going to drag this down to the other queries. I'm going to rename this to, uh, this will be my props uh, two. Uh, and I actually need to remove these last steps because these are the steps that we created to add the extra columns that I have over here. Let's imagine I started fresh uh, with a simple VCAT asset table, like I would in a fresh uh, VCAT template. Okay, so now I started with my uh, assets uh, query. I want to narrow the scope to only the objects that are actually of interest to me. So I'm going to start by filtering the category. Uh, let's load more data. And instead of everything, I only want, uh, we said the uh, plumbing fixtures and the structural columns. Uh, no, sorry, uh, the, uh, what was it? Special equipment, okay. And I can get as specific as I want if I know a subset of families that I'm interested in, or I have specific external IDs that I want to filter based on, I can do those as well. Uh, but for now, we're just going to do it based on a category. So I've already reduced the data set quite a bit by focusing on these two categories. Now I can go ahead and select the object ID. And then this is the only column that I need right now. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all the other columns. Okay. Now I can merge in the properties table. So click merge and select the VCAD properties. Um, VCAD pro, I just need to find it. There we go. VCAD properties. Okay. Uh, connect based on the object ID and confirm. And now I can expand the uh, table like we did before. The other things I need is section name and value. Go ahead and apply. And then I'm basically going to be doing the same steps we did in the other example. So I'm going to filter based on the section. I'm only going to take the identity data. And then of this identity data, I'm only going to be taking assembly code, uh, manufacturer, and model. OK, so same operations as we did before, but with drastically less data. Uh, OK, now 
let's go ahead and remove the section pivot based on the name column like we did before so transform pivot column select the value don't aggregate okay I'm going a little fast because it's the exact same steps we took before just starting from a different point okay and we are in the same situation we had before so I have a single row for each object ID and then I have my three columns uh, and here again I could say okay let's uh, I know that I have a bunch of objects that don't have assembly code uh, maybe in this case I want to narrow the scope even further right away so I know I don't need the ones that don't have assembly codes uh, so I can simply come here and filter it out and so instead of doing a filter from the dashboarding side I can do it in the transform data side so it's done once when I refresh the data rather than every time uh, the, the dashboard has an update okay and so now I've drastically reduced the, the data set uh, I have my, my props to query. I can go ahead and um, apply the transformations. There we go. So again, it's going to uh, refresh the queries that were involved in my uh, transformations. Okay, let's go back to the report and this time we want to check out the model view because we do need that relationship and we want to make sure it was made cor correctly. So let's have a look. Let's drag over my props too. <clears throat> and I can see there is a relationship. It is one to one and it is bidirectional. So this is exactly what I wanted. So Power BI correctly understood that there is a relationship based on the object ID uh, and that there is always uh, a one to one relationship between these rows. So if I go over to my report view, uh, now I can simply copy and paste this table again, uh, set it aside. Maybe let's shrink this just a tiny bit. Uh, and here I can remove the data coming from assets and instead add the data coming from my props too. Uh, same data, so assembly code, manufacturer, and model. Uh, and you can see they'll both react the same way. Uh, it is the interaction is uh, bidirectional. So if I make selections in my um, my prop two query, it is reflected in the asset uh, query as well. Uh, and everything we said we talked about before with the slicers is also valid. Um, so two ways of achieving the same sort of functionality. Uh, the differences come into play depending on how you then want to connect with external data sets, on how neat you want to keep your model view, and just in general how you're used to managing these sort of situations. Uh, I just wanted to really point out that uh, when you're working with, with these VCAT data sets, we call them the VCAT data sets, but the data is yours and you're really free to do whatever you want with them, transform them however you see fit and however you find easier to work with. So with that, uh, thank you for sticking around for this video, and I'll catch you next time.